Hi, this is Ralph Saransky, creator of the Heroes in Training program. We're at the San Diego Comic Convention one year later after we started our program last year with our first hero in training, David Ganong, interviewing Jim Shooter of Defiant Comics. We're here today with uh, David Glanzer, who is one of the head people of the San Diego Comic Convention. We wanted to ask David a little bit about the Comic Convention. Howdy. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank Great. You. Um, the convention, we're celebrating our 25th year this year. Uh, we started out 25 years ago with about 300 people coming to our event, and last year we had an excess of 30,000. And this year we're hoping to attract as many, if not more. Um, we're a nonprofit organization comprised mostly of volunteers, uh, and a lot of the people that come to our event come back year after year after year, which is, I guess, one of the reasons our numbers just keep growing. Why do you think that that is, that there's such an increase in people coming to this convention? Well, we're comic books and we're a, a, a lot more. Our nonprofit charter is for the advancement of the popular arts, and we service all of the popular arts. Not only comic books, film, literature, we have different programs and seminars for people who want to break into the film industry, the comics industry. There are drawing and artist workshops. Uh, we continued a program that we started a, a couple of years ago of having professionals from the comic industry review um, artwork from you know, prospective fans. So this would be pretty, pretty good with that. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you very I much. Sure. You. Hi, I'm with Clark Smith at the Defiant Comic Booth. We're here to award Clark uh, pictures of the heroes, Jim Shooter and cards for the good guys, the kids that were the winners of the good guy comic contest. Clark, uh, we wanted to ask you a few words about Defiant. Well, hi. Uh, it's so nice of you to stop by. This is a real treat. Um, we, we try so hard uh, to have positive values in our comic books, and, and uh, Pauline Weiss, who you're going to be talking to in a minute, be one of the editors of The Good Guys, is working so hard with Jim to create good story, good, good uh, wholesome stories for these kids to learn how to use their superpowers and, uh, and, and, and do the right thing, even though they're young and sometimes don't always know how to do the right thing. Your company was one of the first ones to be interested in taking the heroic ideas out of the comic books and bring them into real life. Who in particular is responsible for that idea? Oh, well, that's Jim Shooter's idea. He, he decided that um, uh, for this particular title, uh, which is about a bunch of, of ordinary children who, whose dreams came true, that he wanted to take real children. And so we did the national contest, as you know. And uh, the children across the country, I mean, there were thousands of them, sent in essays and drawings about who their favorite superhero was and why they would be better at being that hero than anyone else and, and what they would do with their powers to, 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 to pursue good and, you know, and it was, it was, I am so glad I wasn't one of the editors that had to read all those heartwarming stories and choose eight. And uh, so it was Jim Shooter's idea. That, that, that was right out of his head. Well, that's great. As you know, uh, one of our first heroines in training, Laura Neal, was chosen by your company to be a flex in your comic book. And you're familiar with the uh, injury that she suffered in having her back broken and stuff. Do you feel that the impact that your company has had was actually beneficial in helping her to overcome that severe injury? Well, I think she's a real-life hero. And I think that she's an inspiration. And she is so brave. And when we saw her just a few weeks after this horrible accident happened to her at the big event that we had in Anaheim last fall, I think there wasn't anyone in the room that wasn't moved by, uh, by her strength of spirit. And so if we can take a tiny bit of, of credit for, for her being that strong, I would love to. I don't think we can, though. That was her. And I think... Clearly, our editors chose very, very well because she is a she's a real life hero. Well, that's great. I wanted to present a special uh, hero picture of Laura to you, and also of Jim Shooter, and hero and training cards for your uh, seven heroes that you chose to appear in your comic book. If you'd hold the mic here sure. for a second, this is a picture of uh, Laura Neal, the one that we had as our first heroine in training. She was the one that had had her back broken, and this is only two weeks after 12 hours of surgery. She's actually wearing a body cast and was in incredible pain. So we'd like to give this well, thank to you. Thank you. And then we'd also like to present a picture of Jim Shooter, who was the first of the 
heroes, real life heroes that we feel that was open to letting one of our heroes in training interview him at the last comic convention. So we'd like to give that well, to you also. And then we've got uh, comic cards. They're going to uh, love these. Heroes in training cards for each of the good guys that was chosen. So we'd like to well, thank present you so those much. to well, I could, you. I can hardly wait to, to write a beautiful letter to all these kids and send them to them. Uh, uh, I think Pauline Weiss will want to uh, add some sort of a, a long P.S. to uh, whatever we say. That sounds great, and maybe we could have Pauline come up and we could talk with her a little bit. I think that's a wonderful idea. Well, thank Clark, you so much. Thank I, you so on much for your help. Ryan and Jim, I wish he was here to accept this himself, but he's in New York sort of taking care of an important business thing for Defiant. Pauline, nice meeting you. Can you tell us what you're doing at the uh, Defiant Comics? Well, currently I'm editing Warrior Shaplasm, Dark Dominion, and I'm editing The Good Guys, and I will also be editing our forthcoming Glory, which will be out in the spring. What do you feel is the impact of The Good Guys comic book on young people that you've come in contact with through your experience in the comic industry? The impact, I think, is that everybody thinks it's really cool that dreams can come true. And um, I think that kids are really want to be good guys. Everybody wants to be a good guy. And you can really see that reflected in a number of the, the essays that we receive. We are writing a story called The Gun. And, and um, it involves Scrag over here. You might want to take a look at that at the, uh, the cover. Uh, where one of the kids dis discovers the impact of what really happens when you get one of those great big guns. I mean, a lot of the comics that you see right now, the image comics and such, glorify this kind of thing, and these are comics fans after all. So, he discovers a gun, and he decides he's going to use it. I don't want to give away the ending of it, but it will be exciting and dramatic, and um, will affect the good guys permanently. With the scripting on the way that it's going within the uh, Good Guys comic book, uh, what are some of the messages that you're trying to get across to kids? Oh, some of the messages we want to get across to kids. Well, let me let me just sort of sort of go over the philosophy of the Good Guys. When Jim Shooter first came up with the idea, his idea was that the way that children perceive things change changes as they get older. For instance, if uh, you have a kid and the kid wanted to get rid of the drug problem. What would he do? He'd go, and he had superpowers. He would go out and wipe out Colombia. Well, that's a real simplistic answer. As he grows older and he learns more about how life really works, he's going to find out that that answer isn't going to work. But empower real children with that. They are going to go for the simplistic answers. And the good guys goes along as they learn how to really deal with the real world. Well, that's great. Uh, we want to thank you very much for your time and just tell you that you guys are doing really a super job. Not only on the good guys, but on all your comics. Thank and you so much. Thank, thank you so much for your help. You. We really appreciate it. Mark? Well, anytime, Ralph. Hello, I'm David Diaz, and I'm with Diane Valentino, Jim Valentino's wife. And I'm here to present for her a picture for thanking Mr. Valentino for the interview that he so greatly cooperated on. I'd like to thank him also for helping me and giving me some great information about the future and the comic books that he has done. And here you go. This is the picture and two hero cards. Thank you, Mr. Valentino. And the good job that he has done on comic books. We're here with Dan Danko, senior editor of Malibu Comics. And we're out in search of heroes and companies that are doing something to change the problems that people are experiencing in this world, especially is geared toward violence in the population, especially among young people. Dan, what is your company doing to help create positive role models? Well, I think one of the trends that we've experienced recently in all forms of media, whether it be movies or comic books or TV, is that we, as a culture, begin to find the hero as someone who can take life instead of giving it. Uh, whether that comes from an obsession with violence or what have you, it just seems to become a truism in, in our movies and in our TV functions and the comics. And one of the primary things we're trying to do with the Ultimate comics, which are published by Malibu, is create the positive role model through showing a hero being just that a hero, the way we traditionally explained it, uh, the way it's traditionally defined, which is somebody who saves life, someone who gives life, someone who has the ability to create, not just destroy. Um, one of the 
Well, the truism of comics is there's there's a violent side to it. I mean, it's 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 going to be a fact. There's there's men and, and men and women in in uh, Atlantis outfits beating each other up. But the end result, the final point of it is is more of a positive message that that life doesn't have to be destruction. A hero doesn't have to be someone who achieves his means exclusively through violence. It's somebody who can create and still be a hero. Does Malibu Comics have any plans for taking their characters and bringing them to real life in the community as far as inspiring young people to live better lives, uh, help more people, do something with the skills and abilities that they have? Well, it, it's difficult to, to bring the characters into real life, as you say, primarily because they are larger than life. I mean, they can fly, they, they're invulnerable, so it's difficult to make the translation. So we primarily try to rely upon the printed material as that influence. Um, and, as, and what we are trying to achieve is getting that print material in the right hands. Uh, we do realize that our audience is a younger audience um, in many aspects. We do try to get the comics in the hands of, of individuals, whether it be sometimes through charities with hospitals or something of that nature, or, or orphanages or what have you. Um, but we try to let the medium, the material, speak for itself. We're with Editor-in-Chief of Marvel Comics, Tom DeFalco, and we wanted to ask Tom a question about what Marvel Comics is doing as far as the messages that they're trying to get across to young people. Tom? Uh, the main message we're trying to get across to young people is that they should be very strong individuals with a, a strong moral code and a code of honor. That's it. That's basically it. Uh, uh, what do you find has been the value of comics historically? Since you've been involved in the comic industry for many years, what is your perspective over a long time period that you've been involved? Um, comic books create a lot of fun for people and they bring a lot of joy to people's lives and I think that's basically what we do. We entertain people. What value do you think entertainment has in helping people to relieve the stressors that they're under in society and the world today? <laughs> hey, a good laugh goes a long way in life. Uh, I think entertainment, we all need entertainment, we all need a little relaxation, and we all need a little joy here and there. And, uh, you know, what, what good does that do? It makes life a lot easier. You're going to be coming up with a special theme park based on your uh, characters and your comic books and also restaurants. So what are those going to be like? I haven't got the slightest idea. We're in the process of designing them now. And uh, we're all going to see them. Actually, we're going to be at my first meeting with this Monday. And uh, I have no idea. I, I, I hope our, our theme parks will be as big as Disney. They're, you know, close to Disney, I'll be happy. Okay, well, that's great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan Mater. I'm here with David Wu of Great Stone Technologies and Mark Silvestri of Top Cow Comic Books. Um, they're considering a joint merger between the comic book industry with Mark's illustrations and the virtual reality realm being introduced. Um, Great Stone Technologies has done a virtual reality experience we see behind us, and I've had the pleasure to experience it. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the merger between comic books and virtual reality? Sure, Dan. It's called a joint venture, and we just signed this joint venture a few days ago. And the intent of this is to take Mark's next comic book experience, which I'd like him to explain in just a second here, and create a virtual reality experience from that. Mark? Yeah, uh, working with Graystone has been a, a fantastic experience. As you can see, by looking at the machinery that they brought in behind us here, their technology is second to none. And I have to feel that, that uh, us in the comic industry, the Top Cow Productions, Image Comics, we are second to none as well. And we've come up together with this great project called Weapon Zero, which is a science fiction based superhero team, which we're going to put into Greystone's technology and the virtual reality. And it's going to be something like no one has ever seen before. It's going to be something that people are going to come out of and, so, and go, my God, what was that? Get back in line. That's the effect that we're looking for. And between the two of us, the two technologies, the creative talents that we have, it's going to be something national. Do you have any idea when this will come about? Well, according to Mark, the uh, comic book will be on the street within six months, is that correct? Okay. And we'll be on the street with a virtual reality experience six months after that. And we'll debut it here in San Diego at uh, our virtual reality entertainment center. That's due to open in March. Okay, do you think the um, merger between virtual reality and the comic book... 
the joint venture between virtual reality and the comic book industry. Do you think that's a natural step? Yes, I really do, especially after being here for the last uh, three or four days. I can really see the fit between uh, the type of work that virtual reality can provide and the, the, uh, the graphics and the storyline and the characters and all that the, uh, the comic book industry has. I mean, it is truly a natural fit, and I'm sure that all you listeners out there are going to be uh, educated, and our competition is going to be educated, but we don't care. We're going to do it first, and we're going to do it right. Great. Thank you. Okay.